every Corvette owner will tell you. When you're owning a car like this, it's absolutely a love-hate relationship. And what I'm about to tell you is five things I hate about my C3 Corvette. If you know me, you know that car, you know how much I worked for it, how much it was hard to get it back into my family after more than 20 years. But still, even though I love this car to death, absolutely, uh, there's stuff that I hate about it. And I'm about to show it to you right now. So in the list of the things that I don't like about this car, number five is the fact that it's an old car. When you say old car, it's not because of the styling of the car or whatnot, but it's more about all these seals and leaking and all that kind of stuff that happened with the car, especially if you want to drive it a lot. Well, more than just your typical weekend driver. In the case of my car, uh, when I got it, the car has been sitting for almost 40 years. It never been driven in 40 years. So, and also the engine has never been taken apart. All the seals were completely dry. The gaskets, it was leaking on the ground. And my goal when I got the car was to drive it as soon as possible. So it was a lot of try and error. I took the car for a spin, blew a hose, it was always about adding coolant, gauging your levels and whatnot, checking your temperature. It was pretty annoying. I must say though, after a couple of months, I got the car really dialed in, but still, you always remember what happened when the car uh, first got on the road. So, you know, leaking, oil, stuff like that, never a good thing. And I, I think that it's not because it's a, a Corvette thing, it's more of a, an old car that has been sitting for years thing. So even like the brakes, the calipers, we had to rebuild the, the calipers at the four corner of the car. Not that fun, not all that great, but you know, an old car is not reliable as a brand new car with a warranty. So the number four thing of what I hate about this car is basically a thing that I'm not sure if it's an old car stuff or a Corvette stuff, but I heard a lot of guys who had um, plastic noise and rattles inside their Corvette, even with their C5 and C6. In this C3, I mean, without the, the hard top, it's good. It's, it's okay. I mean, I also own a Jeep and in the Jeep, there's, there's noise more than this Corvette. So it's okay. But with the hard top, especially on bad roads, it's terrible to a point that even my girlfriend, she don't want to be in the car with, when the hard top is on because it's almost unbearable. Uh, it's an, a very loud car and you cannot even hear the engine. You just hear squeaking from the hard top and stuff like that. And honestly, I really hate that. And uh, it's a thing that you don't have, you don't have to worry about when you have the soft top. The soft top is just, it's not hard, so it can flex with the body and everything, but on bad roads, especially where I live in Montreal, it's, it's very terrible. But other than that, not that bad, but you can still hear like uh, the windows and the door and, and stuff like that. But I think it's more of a, an old car problem, but it's the number four things that I really don't like about this car. So the number three of all the things that I hate about this car, um, it's a fiberglass construction car. And um, the thing with fiberglass, especially when it, it's that whole, this car is almost, well, this car will turn 50 year old in December. So it's a very old car, old paint. And the problem with that is, um, first of all, there was no clear coat back in the day. So this is a lacquer paint. It's super fragile when you're, for example, when you're uh, putting gas into the car, if there's droplets of gas on the paint, it can ruin the paint job. It's a very fragile paint and you need to be careful whether it is when you're washing it. I try avoiding detailing the car too much just because I want to keep the car as clean as possible and also as original as possible. So that's one thing also with fiberglass and the bad roads, like I said earlier, um, you can, well, you need to avoid, with all the cars you have, you need to avoid puddles. But in this case, you need to be careful because you can uh, start to see some cracks into the bodywork just because of the bad roads. The vibration of the road can damage the bodywork of the car. So, and 
you can see uh, on the car, this car is, like I said, it's 50 year old. So even though it doesn't have a lot of mileage on it, there are some cracks into the bodywork that you'll see on the screen. Uh, but it's something that can happen. It happens with old vet. When you go to a car show, when you see a car that has been driven like this one, you'll see on almost all of these cars, if they still have their uh, original lacquer paint finish or even old uh, clear coat paint job, you'll see cracks into the fiberglass of these cars. Uh, no, no one, absolutely no one can avoid that. The only possible thing that you can do is not driving your car and keeping it forever in a garage. That way the car will not crack. And I think that even with just the car sitting with time, it can have cracks in the bodywork. This car is pretty clean, I'm not gonna lie. I've, I've seen a lot of seed trees into car shows and uh, cars with even less mile than this one that they were in pretty, well, not rough shape, but they had cracks all over the bodywork, especially in the front. This one's got uh, one crack in the front where the, the body sits on the frame. And in the back, there's some small stars, like star-shaped cracks that you can see. But other than that, super uh, pristine condition car. But still, I like to have my car in perfect condition. This is a, a tiny thing that I really don't like. If you suffer from uh, claustrophobia, number two is for you, definitely. The cabin size. Look how small that is. I know it's a convertible. As soon as you remove the top, you're all good. It's fine. But put the top on. It's really, really small. I know that if you have like a T-top Corvette, it's going to be a bit, a big bigger inside. But in the case of this one, uh, it's really, really small. And if you're over six foot, it's not a car for you. Your legs are going to be all around the steering wheels and uh, you won't be comfortable, not even with these seats. Uh, but it's a thing to consider. But in my case, it's no big deal. Uh, the hardtop, especially when it, the hardtop is only on the car when it's cold outside, so not all that much. I'm going to remove it probably in about in about a week or, or two, and then it's going to be the soft top, and I'm going to be all good. Even though the soft top on this car is even smaller, it makes the cabin even more tidier than that one. That's a thing to consider, cabin size. So the number one thing that I don't really enjoy about that car is gas mileage. Yes, gas mileage, but there's a lot of people in the comments that are going to complain about, it's not about miles per gallon, it's about smile per gallon, like that dude in blue used to say, but don't get me wrong. If you wanna drive that car on a regular basis, even though it's supposed to be a weekend driver car, uh, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Just to give you an example, I do a daily commute of about 20 miles a day, and it costs me 40 bucks for two days of work with that car. But, you know, it's all about smile per gallon. When you turn the key, there is no little four-cylinder uh, turbo car that will produce that sound and that amount of torque. Well, yes. Yes for the torque in a race car, but I mean, a naturally aspirated big block 454, it's, it's something really fun to drive. And I mean, like I said, the number one spot about gas mileage, when you're buying a Corvette anyway, you don't really think about this, but it's my number one complaint because every time I'm putting gas into this car, I'm like, okay, that's another hundred bucks down the, the drain, but, who knows? Anyway, like I said, those were the five things I hated about my car or more like disliked about my car. I, I feel like hated is a very harsh word about it. And to be honest, I really love that car. But so uh, those were the five things that I disliked about my Corvette. If you liked that video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And also I really want to hear you about what I should film about this car next. Uh, I'm thinking about doing a video about the five things I, I like about this car or even more than five because I really enjoy that car. But, uh, or other stuff that you'd like to see with the Corvette. I know it's not like a, a new sports car or uh, an import car. I know there's a lot of you really enjoy my Fast and Furious content, but 
For those of you who really want to just know more about Corvettes in general, please let me know in the comments down, down below. I really want to hear you. Um, and uh, that's about it. So guys, it was a pleasure to do that kind of video. A bit different than what I, I'm used to, but I really enjoy it. So talk to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to get all the notification about the upcoming videos on this channel. So talk to you soon, guys.